when you have a local and remote team, you should keep an eye on their relations because we are all people and at some point of time, someone from one team will start to hate someone from other team. And the more you will hear something like, uh, the problem is not on our side. That's a great indicator that something is wrong and you should facilitate this. And this, this will break the productivity of development if there will be some unresolved conflicts between the developers. And another great aspect of frankness um, is that when you do a collaborational um, discussion with your team developers, you could get some new vision from completely unexpected point of view. Uh, for example, you could not to start developing some huge module to your system and spend a lot of money, but uh, they could make an advice to use some external service to cover these needs from the beginning of uh, for the first implementation, for example. And based on all of these points, you should get some trustful relations and you should remember, first of all, that uh, not only product owner should trust his team, but the team members should trust uh, in mutual agreements with uh, product owner. And team is immutable. Every time someone leaves or joins the team, you'll have completely new team. And I'm talking not, a, not only about some cross-functional replacement of developers inside the team. I'm talking about this team spirit and uh, the team atmosphere inside it and actually sharing the, sharing the knowledge inside. Oh, great, great. So we have finished with team aspect a little bit and let's go to the next step, to the evolution by itself, to the process of change inside the product. I will try to describe some, at least some use cases that could be. It's not the only way, but um, for example, use case number one. <laughs> we have some product that was made on parse.com SaaS platform. Uh, about six months ago, it was considered as a good step to start with it. But now, as, as you could know, parse.com should be closed. And uh, our product should be migrated to another technology. Um, currently, we had some core team they had very good domain knowledge of this product, uh, but based on, on the technology aspects and our decision, we decided to choose a Ruby as a good language to, to rewrite this project on. But core team doesn't have a great experience in Ruby. That's why we introduced additional team, remote team to this, par to this part of development. And consider all these things like rewriting the project to the new platform, uh, we had some new design, we had some new features in our mind. Uh, how should we implement this product 2.0? So someone could consider that we should take everything together, make a big rewrite and release new product once with new features and new designs, etc. But uh, who knows what will we get in result? I propose that could, could be something like this, you know, like this haters tweet. We've seen a lot of them when some product released a new version and half of the users said, that's awful, bring me back my old version of the product. Uh, that's why I really propose to reconsider another process of making some revolutionary change in products. This is small steps when um, you should start with uh, re-implementation re in parallel in, uh, a new version of the product on the new platform. Uh, and meanwhile, of course, we will spend some months on this, but meanwhile, we will make some support development for the old version of the product. Then, on, at some point in time, of course, we will need to freeze old version of the product and re-implement completely everything to the new version and release it. And now, the moment of truth. Your users shouldn't notice anything. So when you had made a big change inside your product, Users should still consider that nothing has changed. And only then you need to introduce new features, new design, re-implement old features, but do it only one by one. The main aspect of doing everything one by one is that you can roll back it one by one because you never know what new feature or what new design enhancements will bring to the productivity or performance of your application. And you shouldn't you should, you should always have a way, a way back. Bum, bum, bum. So another use case um, for such a process, we had 
so, uh, some WordPress based project, as you know, it's like a PHP and uh, it had, it was working, it had very huge audience, but uh, our customer decided that he needs some real time features, some background processing, a lot of new things that WordPress platform and PHP just can't cover by itself. We also considered to use Ruby <laughs> and uh, it was estimated to be in about four months. But during these four months, we, will, we needed to experiment with new features in the old product. And that's why uh, when we got this product to our team, we decided to make, to make something that is not really usual to WordPress. We introduced some composer package management. We introduced database migrations automation, automated development environment, and the main thing, automated uh, deployment. And all of this stuff uh, allowed us to make really stable and quick uh, experiments on the old code base. Meanwhile, we freed some a lot of resources to work on the new version and finish new version earlier. So that's kind of real implementation of the strategy. And to recap all these things, that owner of the product should set the goals to development team, and development team should decide the technical steps how to do this, how to implement it. Um, when development team make decision by itself, it gains responsibility for these decisions. And uh, the responsibility is a great motivation. Also, when we have a cycle like planning, implementation and support, team should always understand that everything that they do, they are responsible to support in future. And that's another aspect of motivation. Okay, great. So even in processes section, we have talked a lot about people. So, but I propose not to rely on people too much because without tools, we are not so productive. And the main tool that can help us to work in this process is a communication tool. Uh, we can use a lot of um, different tools for communication. For example, you know, Skype, Slack, Google Hangouts, it's whatever you want. So the main aspect in communication is that all team members, remote and local, should use this tool as a main communication tool. As much communication should be done in shared chats, not in personal chats. And all decisions that are make, made in communication process should be transferred to mm, issue tracking system because tasks just can't flow in the air. You should always have an issue tracker that should be shared among all of users. And another small aspect that all developers should know the flow of the development. It's not only about the words like Scrum, Kanban, Waterfall, etc. Um, users, uh, developers just need to know uh, how to take the new task. What the priority of the tasks? Do we have milestones or iterations, etc.? They just need to be familiar with the, with the process of development. And another interesting aspect of, of tools is automation. Actually. Um, I think that in, in any development process, we shouldn't rely on the sacred knowledge of some one person. We always need to document some workflows of any routing operation and always need to have automation of some routing processes. So now I will make an example of some real tools that could be used for some different automation aspects. I don't want to sell any tools. I don't want to sell any silver bullet you always are free to select what is better for you. And almost every time you can do it for free or for very little money. So first thing to automate is, of course, tests. Your product should be covered with, with automated tests. And it's really mm, different depending on the technology, how you do this. But for tests, there are three general aspects is your tests should always exist. And you should be sure, sure that all new features are covered with automated tests. Your existing test should always be modified according to the modification of the features that they cover. And you should run this test as much as it possible on different uh, stages of development. And that's really all <laughs> what I want to say. About the documentation, uh, I have told previously that you should document everything. And you should share this documentation. This documentation should have a clear order and some permissions. You can also use some tools like Google Docs, Dropbox, etc. Just uh, organize this documentation and keep an eye that the documentation is updated when you change something in your product. Continuous integration. That's an interesting aspect. Um, 
actually, it's a, it is more for developers, but uh, product owner could also see that everything is fine when, um, when you run your automated test inside the continuous integration environment. You can also make a build of the product. And you can use some tools like Jenkins, Travers, or Bamboo. And the main thing is that, that you can increase the visibility of uh, technical aspects inside the product when you add some code metrics or some web hooks or notifications for each build. That could help you a lot inside the team. Deployment is the main part of the web products, especially. Because deployed, it means delivered to the customer, to the end user. And this process should work automatically and should be very reliable. Um, deploy tools are very similar to the build tools, but uh, what, one thing that, sh that is uh, very important for deploy is that um, is this tool should allow you to see the difference between the releases, what has changed actually. And for example, what version of the product is, deplo is deployed to what server. And this deploy tool should allow you to roll back your deploys with one button click. That's the main thing that should be done. Also, provisioning is very often mixed up with deploys. And you know, another edge case when once upon a time, someone have hired some guru that have set up some servers with interpreters, databases, and security. And then all your team members have changed something in the server, have installed something, removed something. And that works fine, at least for the moment when you need to um, set up the same server in another day. Uh, data center. And then no one knows what is actually changed in the server, how it works. So to, uh, to do it properly, you just need always to install and change everything in the server automatically. These tools like Ansible, Chef, and Puppet could allow you mm, to make automated scripts for deployment and to keep track of changes in, of, the, of the scripts inside the uh, CVS. OK, so you have built and deployed everything. The next step, um, do you know, do, does you actually server works right now or it is down? Do you have any errors inside your production code? You need to know all of these things to react somehow. Because if you are not reacting, uh, it could fail. <laughs> so let's see the tools that could help us to make a monitoring. New Relic or Scout could, could make the monitoring of performance on the code level. You could see what parts of the codes are slow or what database queries are slow. And that's, that's a very high, high level view on the code performance. And it's a starting point for your developers to see, uh, to, to start a deep investigation why some part of the code is slow. And for the non technical guy, it would help to see is everything fine is, or not so fine. Another thing, server health. It will monitor the server in general, because you can have a lot of applications inside one, one server. And this is very important thing to use also New Relic or CACT or Amazon Web Services CloudWatch. If you want to plan uh, automatic scaling of your servers, you should see uh, how much load do, do they have, and do you need to implement new servers or not. Monitoring exceptions is actually seeing how much errors inside your code. Such services like Rollbar or Airbrake will catch all errors that happens in your code, and you will see this in these great timelines. And non-technical guys will be able to see is everything fine or not, and technical guys will be able to see what is actually wrong. And you should always try to keep number of errors as low as possible and to react on all errors that happens in your system. Logs. Um, actually, logs are very similar to exceptions, and mostly all frameworks also write exceptions in logs in files. But you know what, the, what is the problem with logs that are written to the server? Because they're written in the text files, and no one ever looks in these files. So no one ever, after that, knows what is actually happening inside logs, and inside logs you can add some debugging information or some handled exception. For example, your payment system is declining, de declining some cards, and you need to know why it is declining. You will add this trace to the logs. Systems like log entries and Splunk will organize these logs, and you, any non-technical person will be able to make a full text search in these logs and to trace an error precondition. OK, that's 
all from my side about tools. I propose to recap everything that I have talked, that in evolution process of change of the product, the team plays the main aspect. And team requires a little bit change at processes and uh, some mental care, some candies, coffee, and a little bit of cool tools. So the only one small thing is left in my presentation is that you should go for it inside your product and make an evolution. Thank you and your questions.